Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. What I'd like to do is show you how to solve this absolute value inequality. Um, and to do this, what we notice, whenever we have an absolute value, again, we need to create our two cases. But when we create our two cases, remember, we're creating a compound inequality. And when I have an absolute value that is greater than or equal to, we're going to create a compound inequality that's going to be in the or fashion. So therefore, I have 2x plus 1 is greater than or equal to negative 9. And 2x plus 1 plus 1 is less than or equal to positive 9, right? Because we're going to do the opposite in both cases. So now I just go ahead and solve. So I subtract 1, subtract 1. So I have 2x is greater than or equal to uh, negative 10. Divide by 2, divide by 2. x is greater than or equal to a negative 5. And then here, subtract 1, subtract 1. 2x is less than or equal to 8. Divide by 2, divide by 2. x is less than or equal to um, 4. So Basically, if we were going to graph these kind of separately here, I'll just kind of do two smaller graphs and then one large graph. Remember, or, well, or remember the and, when we're graphing compound inequalities with and, we're only graphing where they intersect. But with or, we're graphing both of them kind of combined. So at negative 5, let's say here's negative 5, I need to graph all the terms. Uh, let's do it over here, actually. Let's say negative 5, 0. I need to graph all the terms that are greater than negative 5. So I'm going to fill that in because it's greater than or equal to. And then it's going to be all the terms going past 0 in this direction. Here, this is all the terms that are less than 4. So if pretend here's 4 and here's 0, again, fill it in and circle all the points to the left. So basically, from 4, I'm going all the way to the left. From negative 5, I'm going all the way to the right. Well, that's going to contain all the possible numbers, right? Because this is going to continue. Let's pretend here's negative 5. This is going to continue past negative 5. And then at negative 5, this is going to continue past 4. So I have all real solutions for my graph. If here's 0, here's 4, here's negative 5, I go, past neg I go past negative 5 from this graph, and I go past 4 from this graph. So it's going to be all real solutions. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve your compound inequality. Thanks.